Okay, the Lewis structure of the sulfur 4 oxide molecule. Sulfur 4 oxide has the formula SO2. So we need one sulfur and two oxygens. Sulfur is in group 6. Oxygen is in group 6. Now this means that we have in total 6 valence electrons, 6 valence electrons and 6 valence electrons. Altogether, we have 18 valence electrons. Well, we know that sulfur needs two electrons, oxygen needs two electrons. So if we bond this oxygen to this sulfur by two pairs of electrons, then that will fulfill the requirement of the oxygen on the right hand side. There we go, that's fulfilled our sulfur ox our oxygen requirement. Oxygen, of course, has got its own two more pairs, two lone pairs of electrons. One, two. There's two lone pairs of electrons for the oxygen. But what do we do about this oxygen? Well, this oxygen's got six electrons. Let's give it its six electrons. Two, four, and six. There's six electrons. It needs eight. And sulfur has used two of its electrons. If it were to share two pairs of electrons with this oxygen, that would fulfill this oxygen and it would then give sulfur an expanded octet. It would end up with two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. Now this is a reasonable structure because there is evidence that the sulfur oxygen bond length is less than that of a, a single bond or a one and a half size bond if you like. However an easy way to get sulfur to provide oxygen with its requirement is to donate a pair of electrons, a dative coordinate bond from the sulfur into the oxygen's outer shell and at the same time leave sulfur with its own lone pair of electrons. Now this structure allows all three particles to have a completed octet. Sulfur double bonded to oxygen and sulfur dative coordinated to the other oxygen. Now the molecular shape expected here, there are three regions of electron density which means that electronically it will be trigonal planar. However we can only see the oxygen sulfur oxygen and so the actual shape is going to be sulfur oxygen and oxygen like this it's going to be symmetrically angular